My name is Dirty Dan Canterbury and I am a gangman torturer. Just to give you an example, I was at a wedding the other day and I got text, you know, can, can you fit in just a quick torture, you know. I came back from the wedding and the guy was already laid out downstairs and I said to the Lithuanian castrator, I said, look, you know, the problem here, mate, is that this tuxedo costs a lot of money and I'm going to get absolutely covered in bits and blood and guts, you know. I hope I'm going to get a bit extra for this. Yeah, and he said, how about take the clothes off? And I said, I'm not a pervert. I'm a torture. I have standards. I made him give me 30 quid in the end, you know, so all was all, was all right, you know. And uh, it, it can, that's probably one of the pitfalls of this job, you know, the laundry bills and the fact that you have to act quickly. These kind of things, they, they, they just, you know, you, you have to have a natural kind of instinct, you know, and a, f a flair for it. And I really don't, you know, I'm quite, I'm a man of humility and I, I really don't want to kind of big myself up, but I am very, very good at what I do. How did I get into torturing? Well, I left school and like anybody, you know, I tried a few different things, tried accountancy, but really something that I was quite kind of drawn to was was torturing, really. Found myself with a bit of a flair for it. In this game, you get recognised for, for your talents, you know. But I like to think of it really as, as art. The problem with me and, and what I do for a living, it doesn't get recognised. There was some fella who chopped up a cow and put it in formaldehyde. I, I think that was worth a few million quid. Now I chopped up a cow once and put it in vinegar. What did I get for it? Absolutely nothing. Yeah, one of the perks of my job is that I actually do work from home, so I get to see my family. I, I try and keep everyone as happy as best I can, except the victim, obviously. You come down the stairs in, into my basement, it says, you don't have to be mad to work here, but it helps. I did an online psychopath test. It surprised me, actually, that it said, yes, you are mad which, you know, I was quite disappointed at that, really, to be honest. If people paint me as some kind of madman, then I'd, I'd, I'd struggle, struggle to accept that, to be honest. <laughs> there was one time when my, my son Nigel, we came bursting in downstairs, and he actually caught me sawing this guy's ear off. I said, Nigel, um, this, this guy over here, he says your mum was a fat slag. I mean, she is a fat slag, but it's not for him to say. Do me a favour, while I hold him down, can you just saw his other ear off and tip to it really well? You know, I've, I've not asked him to do anything since. You know, I'm not, I'm not some kind of monster. You know, he keeps cutting ears off his bears now. Uh, they're good kids. <laughs> it was been my favourite torture. You look back over the years and you think of all the, the faces and the people you get to meet in this line of work. Now it's, it's really, really hard to pick someone, but I have to say this guy, Giuseppe, what a guy. He, he won, ran this bagel company in uh, East Dulwich, you know. He, he was just, he was just such a nice guy. There was some serious torture involved there and uh, I, I don't like to admit these things, but that is one time well, I did get a bit misty-eyed. God rest his soul, what a bloke. Job's a job, you know. 
That's what's been my most disappointing torture. Oh, when they don't make a lot of effort. I think, oh, come on, mate, come on, you know, I want to hear a bit of, bit of screaming and, oh, mum, where's my mum, kind of thing, you know, and they're like, oh, I'm, I'm not doing any of that. And I think, look, thank you very much. Come, stop being a hard man, scream a bit, give me something I can work with. And there's a lot of them like that, you know, just really get someone weak. Knack and go kart hand ratty. That guy, it just literally, I just, the minute I started going, he told me everything. I'm like, come on, mate, you know, I'm an artist. You're not giving anything back here. He told me everything. That, that was really disappointing. And, and, you know, I had to let him go, and, you know, that was so disappointing. And I told the people who contracted me, I said, look, I'll talk to him again for nothing. He doesn't even have to be involved with anything, but just bring him back and I'll talk to him for nothing because that was such a disappointment. When I'm at a dinner party and people say, oh, what, what do you do? And I say, oh, I'm a gangman torturer. And they say, oh, that's interesting. And I say, well, it, it is, but you know, people don't see the other side when you're mopping up, you know, carcasses down the drain. It's not all glamour. Keeping a, a good clean basement, that, that's key. You've got to think about hygiene and everything else. I wouldn't like them to get an infection. I, I, I blame myself, you know, I feel like torturing myself and that's really saying something. You know, people think, oh, it's quite glamorous. They don't understand the admin involved, you know, the spreadsheets, you know, and you've got a lot of bookkeeping. 30% is, is the actual torturing and 70% is, you know, just keeping all the records together. I've got seven filing cabinets, you know, full of records. Probably shouldn't keep them, to be honest. People have a right to judge me on that. You know, people have a right to think what they like. When, when all's said and done, you know, we're all friends at the end of the day. And we're, we've had a handshake and, you know, no hard feelings. In fact, some of my best friends are ex-torture victims, you know. I'm lucky, I'm so lucky, I'm a very lucky man. Job satisfaction and a wonderful family. <laughs> Wow.